Welcome to another soccer down here, 1v1. Time to catch up with the guy who's going to be on the touchline for Tormenta FC in under 60 days. John Miller-Acy, has it sunk in yet that that, that clock is uh, really drifting under very small numbers? You know, in all honesty, I think we're we're so focused on the day-to-day -day right now and uh, getting the right pieces of the team together, um, building the right culture, um, uh, putting the guys through the right sessions that it's it's way back on the radar it's not it hasn't really sunk in to be honest with you all right so let's get into some of those pieces that have been brought in some are familiar to the followers of the tormenta magenta but when you look at some of the guys uh, who who have you brought in and what have you seen yeah so we the, the key piece in understanding who this team is going to be is that we've been building this team for for a long time um you know, we, we knew that we were going to move into USL 3 is what they were calling it, but now USL 1. Um, and uh, so we started attracting some players to play for our PDL team that we thought could potentially matriculate and and that would be good signings for us down the road. And um, from this past summer, we had a really nice PDL team and it, and it made it easy for me because uh, I hoped to retain 3 to 5. I thought that would be very successful. We ended up retain, retaining 11. Um, and so that made my job a lot easier moving into this next phase of adding players because now we just had to add pieces onto a, a pretty cohesive group that was already there. So I'm pretty excited about the, the nucleus of uh, a lot of new guys, but a good core of returners as well. Well, and you mentioned ho hoping to keep initially three to five. How surprising was it when that number went from five to six to eight to 10 to 11 and I'll hold my follow-up question after this response, but what was it like to see the number of guys who wanted to be back? Well, I think part of our strength, one of our main strengths here at, at Torrent FC is that uh, we're very relational and, and uh, transformational organizational in a sense that we're not just bringing guys in, using them up and spitting them out. I think there's a tremendous amount of loyalty that's, that's built between the player and the ownership and the front office and the coaching staff because we, we're for the player. We want these guys to make it, um, whether it's at Tormenta FC or somewhere USL Championship or MLS. I think there's a lot of trust um, in the organization that they can take a risk with us and we can take a risk with them and invest in each other and move it forward. So for me, um, you know, I knew there were some guys that we had brought into the PDL team that I was most likely going to sign last May when we first got here. But as we continue to play really well, and some guys started to have some, some frankly, some standout performances, and and you know when we played the Charleston Battery in the Open Cup, and uh, I felt some of the better players in the field that particular day. I'm not saying across the board, but on that particular day, with some of our guys, I knew we were onto something. I knew we were at least sniffing around the level that we needed to be at. Um, so yeah, they made it easy for me. I got to be honest. They're good men. They're you know, good, solid people. Uh, and they're strong players with a high ceiling, and it, it made it easy to, to bring them back. And that was kind of what I was wanting to get into with the follow-up question about the particular kind of individual that you're looking for, not just the athlete, but the individual that you're bringing in here. What kind of, what kind of guy off the pitch and in the community is important to you and how you structure things when it comes to the roster of Tormenta FC? Well, the two aspects, um, there's something I talk about with the team a lot about building trust. There's character and there's confidence. And I think obviously, uh, hopefully I got the confidence right in terms of their footballing ability, their, their, their ability to make decisions, their technique, uh, can they score goals, or, you know, in terms of their their performance, you know, I think we, we've got it right. But what's so hard to get right is the character piece and having the right human beings in the locker room, in the community, as part of your team culture, because that's ultimately um, who people are going to pay to come see. Can they relate to the player? Um, our, you know, Statesboro is a, is a good sized town, but it's still a small community and how they handle themselves going to the local grocery store or going out to eat or being involved in some of the youth clubs or just being a presence in the community will make all the difference in the world for us really growing something here uh, and connecting with our fan base. So that, that's a big piece. Um, um, one of the owners that, that uh, uh, Mrs. Van Tassel, we call her Miss Nietzsche around here, we call it the Nietzsche test. Um, the players have to pass the Nietzsche test because 
um, she's very invested in these guys' experiences and very invested in them as, as people. And um, if, uh, if she doesn't approve, things don't go well in terms of how these guys act because she'll let them know. And, and I mean that in, all, in, in a positive way. So, yes, yeah, that's a huge piece of who we are is, is the kind of person and the kind of human being that we're signing is just as important, if not more important, than the actual player. And when the light comes on for that particular athlete, when they're in the community and they see the response that the, the fan gives, the resident gives, the, the casual fan gives, what's it like for you to see an athlete pass the Nitra test and then go out into the community and be a part of the fabric of it that you were looking for when you brought them in in the first place? Well, I think it's, there's still a, a process of us educating our fan base because I think for a lot of the walk-up person, they're still trying to figure out the difference between USO1 and PDL and, and what, 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 what difference is that actually going to be. And I think they'll see it once the games start. But I think in, in trying to fully understand your question, I think it's so important um, that these players are grateful. Um, I think that makes all the difference in the world. If, if our players are, are grateful for their experience and grateful for the opportunity, then it translates in, in their ability to invest in other people outside of just the team or themselves. Um, and that, that's where our fan base can really connect with our guys. And when, and what's it been like for you to see the, the fan base grow and evolve knowing that USL one is, is just around the corner. What's the anticipation level been like? Yeah. I mean, I, obviously I live here in the community and, and I run into people and um, you know, my, my kids are, we have martial arts and ballet and all these things and, and they're getting asked questions and um, I'm getting asked questions. What about the team coach? And, you know, I, I think that's the neat buzz of just being invested in the community that, that you're marketing to is that it, it, it can get organic in that way that, um, you know, I'm running into people. My wife is running into people. My kids are, you know, they, they know the spiel now in terms of, of what to tell people uh, about Torment FC. And, and, and that's been a lot of fun. Is there, is there an index card that you hand out to, to the kids and to uh, the, the better half? It's like, okay, if A, then B, is there a flow chart that uh, when, you, when they go out into the community that they pull out? Or is it an actual card that sits there and has the answers and then you just hand it to them? What's that? <laughs> no, honestly, I think my kids know it better than me. Um, and my wife will tell it to you straight as better than I can, to be very honest. I mean, they're, they're pretty tuned in. And, um, you know, and it's been neat to be a coach at this level and, and have your family around as well, because I've got a, uh, a 15 or soon to be 15 year old boy, soon to be 12 year old girl and a six year old and one on the way. And, you know, they, they love the guys and they love being around them and, and, and me being able to have people on the team that, that I can actually want my kids around. That's important. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, they do a good job of promoting the brand. Let's put it that way. And in the separate conversation that we had with Darren here, we mentioned open cup and the uniqueness of having to open two separate emails when it comes to teams that were going to be a part of it. From your perspective on the touchline, what's it been like to be a part of something from PDL and now on the USL one, League One side to see Tormenta and Tormenta FC2 both heading into an Open Cup situation? Well, I think it's something that we need to celebrate for us as an organization because it, it's taken a lot of work to actually be in that situation, to to be all the work behind the scenes to, to get this USO1 franchise off the ground and then all the work to, to put together a PDL team that qualified for the Open Cup and then won the division the next year. Um, I think it's a testimony to how much hard work has been put in. Uh, and that makes me really excited. And the other aspect is, you know, we, we are very much into this for developing players. Um, and I think for us to have two fields in that comp or two teams in that competition says a lot for what we're trying to do. The reason we've continued uh, a PDL team, or in this case, what they're calling what the new USL2, is because we're going to use that team as one of our primary ways to develop players for our first team down the road. Um, and so what we're going to have here is very unique is that in our training facility that you visited last summer, we've got two full size fields and two uh, eight aside fields uh, in behind those. We get ample places to train. And so when those guys come in in May, 
the USL2 team will be able to train, integrate in with our first team, see what we're doing, be part of our routines. And then I think we really need for our coaching staff to have two teams in the competition, two teams to manage, two teams to prep. Now, the one negative is we can't really bring USL2 guys into USL1s for those competition or for those types of competition for eligibility reasons, if, if they're um, still uh, eligible to play college soccer. But um, it will be a unique challenge for us to have, and I'm, I'm excited to see how we'll navigate it. And uh, last question for you, and thanks for hanging out with us here for another 1v1. And one of the announcements that was made recently having to do with Tormenta is the $1 student ticket. And I wanted to get your perspective from not just a coach and not just a builder, but a father of young kids who are interested in the sport. What's it like to have that kind of a, a you know, part of the fabric of all of the makeup of Tormenta, that $1 college student ticket? What did you think about that idea? Well, the other unique piece is that I, I went to Georgia Southern University um, and, you know, I can, I actually have that perspective from being a student there. And I know that, um, you know, you're scraping together change for, for different, a lot of reasons, but, you know, the fact that we've eliminated the price point being too high for a, a huge community that we're trying to invest in and connect with and have come to our games and, and be a service for, I, I think that's a, a huge step in the right direction. So it's, it's a bold move by the ownership and the front office to do that. And um, you know, I, I think it's a fantastic idea um, because I, I was talking to one of our folks in the front office the other day and they were on campus and they brought it up like, oh, it's only a dollar. Well, then, then I'm coming. And I think that's going to be the unique piece that we're going to have is, is that we're really going to be able to excite a part of our fan base that's from that Georgia Southern community. And, and they really don't have a reason not to come anymore. It's not because they can't afford it. Um, and I think it will, will open doors for, for future fans of our franchise and future fans for the USL and, 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 or, and over time really grow our fan base. John Milleracy, head coach of Tormenta FC. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for being a part of soccer down here as always. And thanks for hanging out for a 1v1. Uh, no problem. Enjoy it as always.